Hey there, students. I'm going to talk to you today about religious freedom in colonial New England. Before I do that, quick shout out to Jake, Dan, Jackson, everybody out there at Video Power Marketing. Thank y'all for all you do to help my channel. Just would be nowhere without these guys. So going into religious freedom in colonial New England, important topic because it really goes back to our elementary school days when we were told that the pilgrims, the people who went to the Massachusetts colony, that they went to this colony because of religious freedom, you know, and they sat down and they had this nice little dinner with the Indians and they, they celebrated all of these traditions of religious freedom we have today. And the whole idea of America as a city upon a hill or a city on a hill, which has been an expression of American exceptionalism. And I know that's a controversial topic, which I might address in in another video, but a lot of politicians have appropriated this idea of a city on a hill that was first uh, written by John Winthrop in reference to the colony in Massachusetts Bay, which was, of course, basically taken from the Bible, where Jesus referred to a city upon a hill. Ronald Reagan, in his farewell address, he invoked John Winthrop, and he invoked this whole idea of America as a shining city on a hill. Mitt Romney basically took that from him in the 2012 election, but Reagan, in his farewell address, painted the Puritan leaders as people who were champions of religious liberty, religious freedom in much the same way that we would view people as champions of religious freedom today. When we think about religious freedom, we think about toleration and the whole idea of people being able to worship as they please in a religiously pluralistic society. Now, unfortunately for Reagan and any other politician who's trying to use history to make a political point, this is nothing against Reagan, all right? Uh, I like Reagan. But when he said this, he was wrong, that history says otherwise about the Puritan leadership in Massachusetts. In context, let's look at what John Winthrop was writing. For we must consider that we shall be as a city upon a hill, the eyes of all people are upon us, so that if we shall deal falsely with our God in this work we have undertaken, and so cause him to withdraw his present help from us, we shall be made a story and a byword through the world. Now, in context, this is really describing the religious commonwealth that John Winthrop envisioned the Massachusetts Bay Colony becoming. And really, the whole idea of a city upon a hill in that context wasn't so much to set an example for the world. Maybe that's there, but really, it's like, everybody's going to be looking at us, and if we fail, everybody's going to make fun of us, and that's going to make me really sad. Ah! You know, that sort of thing. And that's what Winthrop is worried about, but he's wanting to establish a religious commonwealth. And elsewhere, Winthrop wrote in the parlance of his times, we, we must be knit together in this work as one man, as one man, not as a bunch of individuals, but as one man. This is really almost a proto-socialistic sort of mindset. And even if you look at the way that their towns were set up in New England, that everything was about the community. And your job as an individual was to fit into that community. It was not to express yourself or to explore your personal beliefs or anything like that. Your role in this society was to conform to whatever the group says, because whatever the group says is what God says, all right? This was a theocratic religious commonwealth. This was not religious freedom in the tolerant pluralistic sense that we see it today. As far as the origins of religious toleration and the origins of religious pluralism in America, those started in New England, but they weren't started by the leaders. They were started by Roger Williams and Anne Hutchinson, who were two famous dissenters in colonial Massachusetts. And in the next part of this lecture, I'm going to talk about 
about Williams and then Hutchinson. If you wanted to get just the basics, you've got it in this video that there was not religious freedom in the Massachusetts colony and Roger Williams and Anne Hutchinson were both exiled from New England because they advocated religious freedom.